Welcome back to the Battle of Gaines Mill. I've made a few changes uh, from my camp video. I shifted my artillery out of the first division uh, so that it doesn't spawn in a point where it gets attacked really easily. Uh, and I moved all of my fresh uh, infantry units up to 1450. I uh, did this for two reasons. Uh, one gives them a little more staying power and uh, then hopefully they won't bleed down quite as much and I won't have to put as many veterans in next time around. Uh, but the primary reason is I actually wanted to drive up scaling a little bit uh, because I gave things a try with uh, my army from camp and while it went relatively well, uh, I reached a stage in the battle where the AI just would not attack me anymore and they're... They still had quite, probably about equal numbers to my force, uh, and they just sort of stood around outside of range, and I would have had to go after them in the open, and that would have ended really badly for me. So I decided to go back through and uh, increase the size of all my units and uh, give them a few thousand extra men, and it seems like it had the effect that I was going for. So my initial line, I'm going to set up uh, sort of where the AI is on river crossing. Uh, I'm leaving my skirmishers behind just for a few minutes. Uh, sometimes the AI skirmishers can come after you really quick and I wanna try and avoid taking any flanking fire from them. Uh, sometimes I'll run the infantry, sometimes I won't. Uh, you can technically spawn with infantry up here and still make it across. Uh, without getting shot at, but you're probably going to have to tank fire with either skirmishers or with your general um, for the artillery to escape unscathed. Uh, so my plan for the opening phase of the battle is to catch them in the water here and hopefully mostly destroy the first two waves before I have to turn around and go after uh, the flanking force. So you can see I'm setting up a arc of artillery. Uh, you don't really need too much in the north. I sort of, I put a bunch of infantry units up there initially just to sort of convince the AI to not go that way. I'm not entirely sure if it's necessary, but it seems to consistently get the results that I want. Uh, so I figure I keep doing it. Uh, I back my infantry off a little bit uh, in the south because I want the units to come into the water before I move in there. And I'm going to have to pull them in and out multiple times to keep getting units into the water. I don't, like, with Anderson, I don't think he's actually at, like, 0% cover or anything. Uh, he's probably at somewhere between, like, 30 to 50% cover. Uh, and I'm not 100% sure what his damage uh, looks like, uh, just because the way I had to implement the terrain damage features isn't entirely the same as the way the base game would have done it, uh, but it's the only easy way I had to uh, replicate what was going on there. So you can see we shattered the first one. Uh, we'll starting to pull my units back again because you can see the next two brigades coming in and I want to get both of them into the water before I uh, push my unit back forward. Uh, and I have some skirmishers to the south. Uh, sometimes their skirmishers will come right through the middle at you and you can kill them really easy. Sometimes they will try and flank around to the south. So it really varies what they do. Uh, running and hold fire so I don't uh, put off a volley in the open. I really want to make sure I don't get hit in the open by the enemy unit. So that worked just about perfectly. Uh, bringing my three-star infantry uh, down south in anticipation of needing to extend the line down there. And starting to pull units out of the north uh, now that the AI is just standing around. Uh, you also notice there's some weird firing distances going on up north there. Uh, like how Carr can hit Greg right now, I don't honestly understand. Uh, no logic I can come up with as to why he would be able to fire at him. Uh, but we'll take advantage of it. So we lose an officer on one of the rookie units. Unfortunate, but going to happen. So skirmisher showed up uh, on my left. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a bug or if they're equipped with, they're probably equipped with range 300 weapons and maybe that's why they aren't firing. Um, yeah, it's got to be it, because I think my units are outside of range. I'm not really sure why the skirmish unit doesn't move into range to attack. It 
Seems like it should. I've seen it happen before, but in this case it doesn't. So, but even if it was in range, uh, you'll take some losses on your on your dedicated skirmish units there, but it's nothing too bad. So I'm shifting Loomis into position so I can rotate Schaefer out. Uh, you need to be a little careful with the units in the north. They will generally be spotted, and depending on when the AR, where the AI artillery goes, uh, sometimes the AI, that those units will rotate to attack you. Uh, so in that case, you have to be a little bit, you have to pull back a little bit more. Uh, also, you need to keep an eye on. It depends what sort of artillery the AI ends up with. Uh, we are, on, or at least this battle is on a fairly high weapons uh, count. So there's a decent chance that 10 pounder parrots or a three inch are gonna show up, which will go after your artillery. Uh, that's partially why like my 20 pounders, three inch and such are so far back. Uh, my Napoleon's a little farther forward, but uh, they have speed so I can pull them out pretty quick if they start taking fire. So this is going pretty well, uh, though I do want to start getting my infantry uh, back again uh, because you can see that we're just firing across both of us are in good cover, firing back and forth across the uh, creek, which doesn't do us a whole lot of good. So I'm going to start getting them back out. Uh, I was a little late with moving my supply wagon. My management of supply wagons is not great this battle. Uh, and you can see my long range artillery is mostly targeting his, uh, trying, to, trying to get rid of that if I can. Uh, and they have two infantry brigades moving much further to the south than I feel like they usually do. Uh, but I've got some extra units that I can throw in to deal with that. So I've got some more units in the water again. So we're gonna send the infantry forward, same plan, hold fire. I don't hold fire with Shermer uh, because I know that they're gonna target Carr and that I can uh, get away with it. Uh, and then I pull my three-star unit out because there's unit, fresh units coming in and I don't want him to get targeted. But you can see they tend to like to cluster in the center here, especially if you give them targets to focus on. Uh, this is also probably around the point when you want to start making the consideration of is it worth staying in or is it better to fall back? Uh, because there's enough units clumped up there that you're just not going to clear them out in time. And you're going to start taking a lot of fire from across the river. And so we got our got our reinforcements coming in. They're going to take a while to get there. Uh, but they're going to be in position to help defend the second line. So I'm switching my targets from the artillery that's in the woods to the artillery that's in the open. Uh, because that artillery is going to do a lot of damage to my units that are not quite in canister range, but pretty close. So I definitely know I need to get those units in the center out of there. And I think at this point, yeah, at this point I'm starting to decide, okay, we did what we could here. Now we're going to pull off uh, and back up to the next line. So I'm setting my skirmishers around to the flank. Uh, usually, it's possible their skirmishers are there, but usually they move somewhere else by now. Uh, so I want to get up there and see if I can get after those supply wagons and stuff. Uh, I retreat with everything in the south first uh, and leave the units in the north in position. Uh, they can get some flanking fire as the rest of my line retreats. And then like Tompkins will sort of hold, sort of plug that position a little bit while everything moves up and then I can get them out of there and then back everything up. So the next line I go to is just in front of the creek and uh, sort of the line of trees uh, behind what we're looking at right now. Uh, that sort of gives you another good concave. Uh, so I set up all my artillery right behind there. And the eventual goal is to try and get them all to more or less start heading south. And then we can use that little uh, L-shaped section of woods and start uh, hitting them from the flanks from there up north as well. Uh, you do want to be careful about holding uh, this southern section of the line, uh, especially if they start to wrap uh, further to the south where I have the uh, my three-star unit. Uh, 
Uh, I really want to try and avoid that as the defensive position just starts to get progressively worse that direction. And they can start routing into the swamp and getting really far behind your line. Uh, you can. I have held in front of the... That was a mistake. I let those should have put those units not on hold. Uh, should have put them on hold fire so they wouldn't have tried to fire when in the water. Um, but so I have held in front before. You do have vision up top uh, as long as you have units in the north. Uh, it's not a great position, but it can work. Uh, with three units coming up, I just decided that it. I didn't want to have to worry about getting charged and then having to try and fall back across the creek. Uh, so I decided to just stay here. You have okay cover here. It's like 60-70%. It's not great. Uh, eventually, sometimes hopping in the fortification is worthwhile, but it's very hit or miss. Um, like that southern for fortification tends to get flanked from fire in the north. Uh, the middle one and the right one sometimes you can use, but you also get hit more. So it's definitely a by the situation sort of thing, whether or not it's worth it. Uh, I've got my... Skirmishers going after the artillery. And I'm moving up the Napoleons to back the southern section of the line because that's the one I'm most worried about. Uh, we get charged in the center there, which isn't great. I didn't think I was going to be able to uh, cancel that, so I didn't bother. Uh, just countercharged it, and canister from the 24 pounders solved the problem for us. So almost got our units here, so we're going to use them to replace some of the smaller units that are getting pretty small. Uh, backing the skirmishers off to force the artillery to relimber, and then we'll go after them again since that resets their reload. Uh, we wanted to try and keep this infantry in the south focused on the units in front of them as opposed to turning to the side. And we're just slowly shifting everything down. Uh, as we get more and more control over the north side of the map and they start to shift away from there. Uh, again, behind schedule on the wagon, just not on top of that. But this is going pretty well so far. Uh, we've got a good contain going up. They aren't going too far north. They aren't going too far south. Uh, sometimes with the way those units get set up, they will just sort of walk uh, sort of, I guess, to the farm to the left of Tyler straight across, and then it's really hard to actually force them into the center. Uh, and in the case, you basically just have to fall back, and then you're just in a worse spot. Uh, the southern part of the line is definitely the weakest part. Uh, that's the one where you can get overwhelmed pretty quickly and then you're you don't have to hold that flag you can give it up entirely uh if things go particularly bad that is my next fallback plan uh but then you get squeezed pretty tight uh so what it, where it would be is you'd give up the flag and you'd go to the sort of the farm and that little tiny creek line uh behind there uh you could defend from there uh but the vision isn't great and they'll be in more cover and they'll be on the hill so if you can avoid it don't want to have to fall back that far. So I tried jumping car into the fortifications to give him a little more range since it broadens the unit. Uh, but you can see where the wrap on the north is starting to work. And we can just let the snipers go to town up there. And now that we got our reinforcements in, I'm pulling out the weakest units on the line. See, car is starting to take fire. I should have pulled him off already. Uh, the angle that they can fire at is pretty big, so they can hit him, even though it seems like they probably shouldn't be able to. And I'm starting to pull some of my units out of the line uh, because sometime around now is when the AI is going to show up from the north. Uh, the AI is oddly hesitant to really attack too much from the north. I'm not sure if this is because I am mostly destroyed these units here. Uh, so I have to I get charged. No way I'm going to get out of that. Those units are super quick. So I charge the unit behind the small one because I'm expecting the small one to die pretty quickly. And that keeps the charge going longer. Uh, we lose an officer, but we do get the route. 
And once we chase that unit off, then I'll keep sending the three star over. Uh, but anyways, you don't, AI is not very aggressive from the north, uh, especially if you don't give them any targets to engage. Uh, they'll just sort of move up in a line where they seem to mostly sort of expect the player to be and then promptly sit around and don't do a whole lot. That isn't 100% consistent. Uh, sometimes the AI does more, sometimes it does less, uh, but it seems to work fairly often. Uh, where as long as you don't give them anything to engage, they won't really go after you and you can afford to fight one side of the battle then flip to the other side of the battle and then go back and forth. Uh, but you do want to have some units on that flag there uh, because sometimes they will go after that a bit more aggressively and uh, you can see like if they would get to there, that would just destroy my line. So uh, I pull off some units that can afford to take some casualties and start to put them into that line. Uh, while leaving my more damaged units to fire at things on the flank. Uh, you can see I've moved Scale's uh, rifle into the fortification there, since he's, these units are smaller, they're not dealing so much damage, and they're starting to route pretty quick, so I can, as long as the fire isn't too concentrated, uh, Scale's is actually in better cover in that fortification than he would be if he was just standing there. Uh, so, one of the cases where it, it can be worth using them, they're just very, very situational. And this actually works out better than they, like the fortification here is actually more useful than it would be in the base game because in the base game with the weapon ranges, the AI would be moving into into that tree line to be able to shoot me. Uh, so it would, now here they're standing in the open. So it's a much better engagement than if I'd let them come closer. Uh, the base game, you'd want to defend probably f either from the forward line or then defend much further back from like the farm line or something. Uh, so... They send their artillery completely unsupported, so snipers are able to get rid of it. Uh, I'm not really sure why the artillery goes to the north there, and I somewhat suspect that, I guess, that that's probably because the AI is expecting that you didn't defend so much in the north, and that you're sort of, you're actually in the trench line, and then, then that artillery would be coming in and starting to put extra fire into that salient in the north, uh, and that would actually be good, but with the way we are playing the battle, uh, that ends very poorly for them. So we've almost killed off everything in the West now. So pulling more and more units away from that. Uh, this Napoleon placement, it turns out to be a mistake. Uh, I should not have left them in the open because of the high probability of long range guns uh, showing up uh, from the North. I should have put them in the wood line uh, a little further South. Uh, so I'm not being too aggressive with my units uh, in the in the east. They're just sort of if the AI starts to start decides to start moving, I just want them to run into something. Uh, I've also had cases where if I didn't move anything at all, uh, I had a random uh, duplicated unit walk capture McHenry Hill, walk all the way across to the middle vision point, and then I had to kick it out from that uh, from there, uh, which is a little odd because none of the other units followed them. Uh, actually, probably get fairly rough if that happened, though there is, you could you could build a pretty defensive line just uh, if you set up in the farm and then just faced east. Uh, you could probably hold from there, uh, and you don't have to hold McGee Hill uh, before the phase change. So as long as they, if they were really aggressive, you'd probably either hold where I am or uh, at the line further back. Uh, and then try and kill them all off and then uh, move. So that's why it was a mistake to put the Napoleons there. Uh, you can see I take two rounds and I lose a gun and a half. Um, and that's with a unit that is equipped with horse speed so or horse artillery, so I can actually get out of there in time. I probably would have lost two or three guns had it been a different unit. Uh, I threw Tompkins forward to distract the artillery in case I couldn't get them out of vision in time. I'd rather take the infantry casualties and the artillery. And the supplies are trying, don't know I'm there, so they're trying to move over to the artillery to reinforce it. So I'm just sending, sending my faster melee unit to go capture it. I'm pretty sure there's no infantry left over here. This is risky, but I'm fairly confident in that.
So just leaving some units in the left because I know eventually something's going to show up over there. We're getting shelled from the artillery a little bit, but we've got all our counter batteries set up, so we're able to get rid of theirs pretty quickly. And we've got an angle on Colquitt, so just, just sort of softening him up a little bit. Uh, we don't really need to get him off there. Uh, though in the battle, I at the time I was playing, I didn't actually remember if you had to hold McGee Hill or not. Uh, I, Without knowing that for sure, I probably should have gone after this faster. Uh, you can see I'm starting to go for it, but with only eight minutes left, it's not a lot. Uh, for instance, if that couldn't be contested, then I would probably have lost the battle right now. Uh, but I'm using my skirmish unit to... I think that unit's technically the closest, though I'm not entirely sure there. Uh, but AI clearly thinks it is, or at least is stuck on that target, and presents his flank, and we're able to get him off pretty easily. Uh, but you can see we're not quite going to capture it before the uh, phase change ends, but it turns out not to matter. So now we have another attack from the west that we're going to have to worry about. So I'm just going to try and grab the flag here, and we're going to back off. It's actually a little unfortunate that these guys aren't attacking harder. If they were coming in more, then my artillery would be able to go after them, and I'd be able to start clearing them out. So I, you can see I was bringing all my artillery down to go to the east, but I didn't really have time for that, so I'm setting it back up to deal with the attack from the west, because that one I know is always aggressive. And then we'll try and go back to deal with the stuff in the east at the end. But we're in pretty good shape so far. Fought off the first two waves really well. Uh, the third wave isn't really doing a whole lot, but it's not threatening our line. We got rid of their artillery, so we're free to move around again. And our units are... I've got a few units left that haven't taken too much damage, so I should be able to put them in position that they'll take most of the brunt of the last attack from the west. Because uh, as you can see, everything is three stars, so... Uh, even when they're fighting in pretty unfavorable position, uh, they still perform pretty well against my units, inflicting quite a lot of casualties. So you can see an example of why you need to leave units in places, because if, it seems like if you abandon areas entirely, then the AI gets the impression, oh, hey, maybe I should go there. Uh, but I guess if you have anything there, then it just thinks it doesn't need to go after you. I don't know. The more you play the game, the more you realize the flaws of what the AI can and can't do. Which, you know, it is what it is. Still challenging, still fun to play. Uh, so we're getting charged. Not great. I really don't want to get into a melee with that guy. Thankfully, he has to go through that creek. It slows him down a bit. I'd really like to be retreating further back. I, that route was That route click was a mistake. Uh, but we're able to spin back around and at least not get shot from the rear. And our reinforcements have finally arrived. So we're trying to get that guy back into cover, and then we'll hit, hit his unit from multiple sides. Uh, I'm going to send the artillery to the north, see if I can grab the wagon if it's free. Otherwise, I'm going to send it all the way around and go after the artillery from the attack from the west. Uh, you have to be really careful with the cavalry because... Your vision just isn't great in a lot of areas, and sometimes the AI will just... Infantry units will just randomly stand around in areas and not doing anything, uh, which isn't particularly helpful for the AI unless you're trying to pull off shenanigans with cavalry, in which case, or snipers, and then you accidentally walk straight into the unit, and uh, then you're really sad. Um, definitely have a test run where that happens, and I just blunder my cavalry straight, that I'm, you know, extensively trying to not take any casualties on this battle, straight into a pair of infantry units and lose like $20,000 worth of men in, you know, a volley and a half. Uh, that was real fun, but things went a little bit better this time around. So you can see when the AI does get aggressive in the east, I don't 
have the greatest setup to deal with them because I have a bunch of units in the open and I'm just going to take a lot of damage from them in that case. So I'm trying to pull units back so that if he's firing at me, he's at least getting hit from a couple different units at the same time. So you can see uh, Picket is coming after us. That's that's sort of the angle that can screw you over in the first phase, uh, where if they come at that angle, you just don't have a good line to set up and defend from. Uh, I guess if you had more infantry, you could probably hold it straight, but I just, you know, don't have that much available. Uh, so having to give up the nice little contained flank, and we're going to have to fall back to the second line. But we're holding well in the north. We're getting charged. I think I, I'm not really sure why I hopped into the, oh right, I, I hopped into the fortification there to hope that it would trigger the, you know, the charge lock it, logic and maybe the AI would cancel. It decided, you know, screw that, I'm going to kill this unit. Um, thankfully I have some extra units arriving, so when I inevitably lose that melee, I can at least fire into it and hopefully route the unit. Yeah, you can see losing that fight pretty bad, uh, but I've got a lot of artillery and I've got a lot of support fire. So Schaefer is getting wrecked. I want to say that unit started at like 1450 and he's down to 1600 or 600, which is not great. But on the upside, they are being a bit aggressive. So that means I'm going to be able to start working on them. Uh, the worst part of getting charged on the left there is that now that unit is down in the swamp area and the swamp just absolutely eats condition and getting the unit, extracting the unit out of there is going to be really hard. Also, now there's an AI unit that's down to the south, so it's going to start coming back and flanking my line uh, when it eventually recovers. Uh, their artillery keeps just wandering forward. Um, I'm going to half think that those are 12-pounders. Um, the AI seems really bad with 12 pounders. I, as much as the short range probably works for the player, uh, I'm kind of thinking that that range needs to go up from 800 just because the AI just does not know how to deal with artillery that that's short of range. It just, it doesn't use it properly. It just walks into range and gets shot a lot. So um, that's probably something to look at in the future. So I guess right now, technically, that artillery unit can't see anything in line here. Uh, so that's probably part of why it's going forward. Uh, also, probably another reason why infantry spot uh, infantry need a spotting perk. Uh, because you can see how close, like, their spotting is so bad that let's, uh, let's, they walk into, like, half rifle range without seeing anything. Uh, which is not great, so... Yeah, either the, maybe, an, possibly either, maybe a general perk. I'm not sure if we have the slots to fit that in, though. Um, either way, something to look at. Or perhaps just increase the, could increase the spotting bonuses from efficiency. I don't know if that benefits the player a lot, too. There's probably a solution. I'm not sure what it is at the moment. Uh, so because the infantry is just sort of sitting around there and I can't get vision on anything, also the artillery just keeps killing itself, uh, I sort of bring the cavalry start uh, back. I want to try and go after some of this infantry because my right flank is kind of a mess at the moment. This is where if I could build more infantry units, it would have been very helpful because I have like five skirmisher units over there that you know can sort of delay and distract, but they can't really hold a position. Like I could... Theoretically, I could hold the tree line to the east there and then just wrap everything into the center. Um, that would go a lot better, but I just don't have the men for it. So on the left here is, this is that was sort of the AI behavior I was getting before I increased my sizes. Uh, they were just sort of standing around a whole lot, not coming after me. 
I had dismounted the cavalry at one point to see if I could get better spotting, but it didn't work out. Uh, I really need to get a scout unit of cavalry set up uh, that can... Basically, that unit will just go to two-star, get the spotting perk, and more or less be on spotting duty for the rest of the game. Uh, they're really useful because it just they move super quick, and my snipers with the spotting perk don't have speed. This that Anderson's charge right there is really dangerous because I don't really have any position to stop him, and all of those units are pretty fr uh, pretty much rookies. So if he slammed into us in melee, there is a decent chance that he rolls all three of those units, all four of those units there. Uh, we get really lucky and he stops, um, still puts a volley into his point blank. We lose some artillery fire, uh, which not good, but, uh, better than him getting into melee. Cause I'm pretty sure he wins that fight, especially one if he gets into melee with that, with those two artillery units and stops them from canistering, he definitely wins it. Uh, but we have just enough in line to stop him. And sending the cavalry in to try and clear up some of these uh, units. And just sort of letting the artillery barrage continue over there. The real unfortunate part of using the cavalry that way is now it forced Anderson to route to the east. And that means he's going to route straight into a bunch of trees. And I'm not going to have enough damage to keep him routed. So now I have to try and throw a bunch of uh, units in that direction. And then he's going to be in the trees with me in the open. Which is just a really bad spot to be. Uh, I'm trying to get an extra shot off with the cavalry. I think that's actually a mistake. I should be pulling them out already. Sending them up to deal with uh, the unit that Wagner is chasing. Yeah, so I try and pull them out. Unfortunately, I get the rear flank on Porter's unit, which is the one I really, really didn't want to take any casualties whatsoever on, because sometimes the game hates you. So this is not a great situation for Brooke. He's about to get hit from the north and south. So I routed Anderson again, so I'm trying to get enough units onto him that I can keep him routing. I'd really like it to route him out through the trees, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make it work because most of those units don't have great damage. Uh, I get lucky, and Wilcox goes after Franklin as opposed to Brooks. And we just routed Pryor, which helps. So throw him into the fortifications for the bonus and relying on numbers and supporting fire to deal with them. So Anderson recovers again. It's not that he has good morale, but he has he he went above 20%. Uh and that's enough to let him fire and then he'll do enough damage when he fires that he'll recover even more. Then he's able to charge off that. So shattered that unit. Gonna send the shotgun unit around to see what I can find over there and dismount everything and try and get some free shots into uh, Garland, I think. Um, I'm not, I, with how much time I've left, I don't think I play the right side of this map well at all. Uh, I end up with a, a long slogging fight in the woods uh, and I think it would have been better. Like you can see Garland is trying to move back towards the flag again. I should have just backed everything off let them come back out of the woods or set myself up in such a way that when they reach me and then I route them again, that they route the direction that I want them to. Instead, I just keep throwing more men after it and trying to chain route them. And see, it sort of worked over uh, with Anderson, but not particularly well. Also, a lot of these units are not great on condition, not great on ammo, just not a good setup. So the last of the AI units have, from the west have started to come in. Uh, 
and you see like this is a that encirclement is a bad plan because it's gonna he's, he's gonna i'm not leaving him a route option that sends him into an area that doesn't have cover like i mean he's either gonna go east south or southeast southeast would be great good but not great So, was gonna send the snipers around. We need to. Uh, I'm gonna set them uh, those units up to provide supporting fire there. And thankfully, the fortifications hold pretty well. Partially due from a lot of supporting fire and the artillery and the like. So you can see, I moved a bunch of what a dozen units over to try and keep Anderson routing and he's just gonna uh, show what happens when you throw a bunch of units in the woods and just let them fire at each other and over and over uh, it's pretty much uh, how people lose Chickamauga in action uh, if you just let units slam into each other in heavy cover a uh, whole bunch of people are gonna die and nothing's really gonna change So my plan is sort of working in the north. I'm trying to get my ammo wagons back over. Throwing that unit into the fortifications again to see if that works. And then I charge with my cavalry. That was a really terrible idea. Like they're half in water, half in woods. They aren't at full stamina. They don't have a charge perk. They don't have great melee weapons. And the unit is twice their size and three star. So even though it's artillery, like, that unit is probably going to win that melee. Uh, I should never have run into there. I should have walked up, fired the shotguns, backed off, done it three or four more times, then meleeed, preferably after they were already routing. Um, uh, Pickett threw us straight out of the trenches. Uh, so now we're back to the second line. Have a second unit route. I really want Garland to go further south. Uh, doesn't work out. Uh, so because I knew that cavalry unit was going to get destroyed and exhausted if I left it alone, I sort of risked that there was nothing else there and threw both of my infantry units forward to go after it. And you can see Anderson just sitting there getting more than enough morale back from each volley that he does uh, to keep him there. So you can see this is why I wanted to avoid this sort of setup in the first place. I've got this weird line where I don't really have great cover. They're going to be in, okay, in good cover when they're coming in. Uh, and they're going to be wrapping from multiple sides. So I can't really... I've got the reverse concave going. So I'm bringing the three star down. Because uh, Garland probably isn't going to move. Uh, and I really want to break Anderson out of that spot. Uh, so I'm hoping the three-star unit will be able to provide enough damage to get rid of him. Uh, part of the problem is both of those Napoleon units don't have a canister perk. They have the movement speed perks, and they just don't do a whole lot of damage. And I mean, I didn't expect them to. Uh, their whole point is to level that unit up a little bit, so it'll be effective. Uh, I do really like having the move speed perk on the uh, Napoleons. Um, I'll leave the canister perk on the 24 pounders for the heavy defensive duties, but it's like you saw in this battle already. Uh, it's really helpful to be able to just throw them from one section of the line to the other fairly quickly. Um, and I just don't have any other artillery that can really redeploy like that. So three star unit does its job. So we're going to get them out of, uh, out of, out of cover. Really don't want that unit to end up in melee. That would result in a dead unit. Uh, I'm sort of leaving Garland alone up north uh, while I deal with everything else. I'm hoping to kill off Anderson and then come up and deal with Garland. Uh, that light infantry unit is able to keep shooting at him. And Garland just doesn't respond for whatever reason. So 
Eh, just for your experience. Even though he does almost no damage. Uh, and I've sped things up again uh, at this point, I believe. I uh, was running the battle at 2x just because it goes on for a while and there's a lot of downtime. Uh, and then there's an extended cleanup period, which probably takes me 20 or 30 minutes of real gameplay time. Uh, so I figured I'd hurry that along a little bit. So I finally got Anderson to the corner. Uh, I'm setting up my uh, two dismounted cavalry units to be able to just uh, farm firearms on him. Could go and try and melee with some of these units, uh, but I'd really just rather keep them going. I brought the three star down mostly just to keep him routed. I probably should have actually pulled that unit out and let the other units uh, get the experience. Uh, he doesn't really need more. Oh, I guess I did pull him off at that point. So, yeah, 3x is a little hard to probably follow what I'm, what's going on, but uh, there's not a whole lot really happening. We're just killing the units that walk up to us and closing the gap on anything that starts routing. So we cleared everything in the bottom, now moving up to try and deal with Garland. Just trying to slowly move forward in the, bottom, in the south uh, so we don't take fire on any units in the open. And we've got about 40 minutes left, so... We'll probably be close to getting them all, though we're going to inevitably end up pushing these units into the swamp, and pursuing into the swamp doesn't usually work out particularly well, so we'll see what happens. Prefer not to kill that wagon, so I'm going to try and kill off some of the infantry first, and then I'll run a general or something out there uh, to grab it afterwards. And you can see uh, those units are sure. I think what happens is the units, if they get that far south, they start thinking, oh, I should go after McGee Hill, uh, which leads to them incidentally flanking your line even more, uh, though they don't ever really do anything with it. So we've almost got Tyler in position, so he'll be able to break Garland again, and then we'll just be able to close in and shoot him, to, shoot him down. Uh, it would probably be good to have a plan to actually get him out of cover and then shoot him down, but I don't think I have time, so I'm just going to hit him for as long as I can. Starting to get some shatters. Garland breaks and thankfully doesn't try and uh, scoot through my lines. Send the general forward to grab the supplies. and just push everything up to be able to fire at Garland for the last couple of minutes. And sneak in some extra shots with the cavalry. So if we aren't gonna quite get everyone, uh, if we had a few more minutes, we could do it. If we were much more aggressive, we probably could have, but good enough. So yeah, uh, that uh, is a pretty decent result, though, you know, 8,000 casualties, that's roughly almost double to triple uh, what I used to be able to do in this battle. Um, you know, I'd say around 3,000 casualties was average in 1.24 or the base game. Uh, artillery did well, our snipers did well. Uh, Baird's rifle actually did really well. Uh, I have to go back and look at where he was. Uh, he must have just been able to fire at stuff for quite a while. Um, it's definitely good to see the rifle units uh, up there in kills with the artillery. I mean, they're behind it, as in some ways they should be, uh, but they're... These numbers are much more in line with, you know, artillery not just absolutely winning everything. Uh, some pretty high casualty numbers on a lot of those newer units. Anderson definitely killed a whole lot of rookies in the woods over there. Uh, the shotgun unit ended up with a decent number of kills. That make, That's good. They want to try and turn him into a scout unit. And some of these reinforcing units didn't either didn't have any experience, didn't have good situations, so they didn't do a whole lot, but they'll gain some. 
we'll be able to reconstitute them for Malvern Hill. Uh, definitely a lot of wounded officers. Several promotions. Uh, and two lieutenant generals, uh, which is definitely going to make the next couple of battles much easier. Uh, we'll be able to get some good auras on those. Uh, some Tyler, Texas, which is a little surprising. We're the 1861s. I was right, there were a bunch of ordnance, and the rest were 12 pounders, which probably explains the running in and suiciding. Very few 10 pounder parrots. Got most of the supplies. So yeah, uh, higher casualties uh, than, you know, I guess previous versions. Uh, so that actually makes that battle. That's it's a pretty it's a pretty decent follow up to Shiloh now, uh, especially if you go infantry heavy. Uh, you can you can face you know almost double the numbers I did. Uh, so if you want the challenge, yeah, have fun. Uh, decent experience gain on a lot of units. No uh, no obvious uh, promotions over here, uh, but we should be able to. Probably get a couple more boosts if we move some officers around. And heavy losses on a lot of our infantry, and so we're gonna have to burn a lot of rookies to get those units back up. But we'll they'll they'll slowly keep advancing and we should as they get better, we should be able to keep the casualties down more. And we've got plenty of officers. We're gonna get a lot back after Malvern Hill. Uh, more, not a huge haul there, but enough to get a couple more one-star units on the field. We've got a good number of rifles. Be able to replace a lot of the 1855s with 1861s. And we'll be able to slot in a few more artillery units, or well, not art expand the size of a couple more units. And they got another weapon shipment. Uh, I'm not sure I've ever seen two weapon shipments that close together uh, in this campaign. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that. Uh, I'm guessing that means I will be facing mostly 10 pounder parrots and three inch uh, guns at Malvern Hill, uh, which means my units are gonna take a beating until I can get rid of his artillery. Um, but only 46K, uh, that's about normal for Malvern. Uh, the scaling on Malvern is not nearly as bad as what happens at Gaines Mill. Uh, so I should be able to expand the army a decent amount and maybe we'll get some melee brigades started. Anyways, uh, I will be back uh, with the next battle. Uh, hope that was helpful. It was a lot more fun to play that one than it has been in the past. Uh, so hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.